it's it's the same thing as going out to Regina at, to work at the Globe Theater uh, with Ken and Sue Kramer, mm -hmm. who do not get anywhere enough credit for the barriers that they broke down for artists of color in Regina. They okay. were they were huge. Mm, really. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, tell me who they are. The Ken and Sue Kramer owned the Globe Theater, like it was a okay. private theater that they owned right mm. before it became a nonprofit, whatever. Mm. So you know the concession money went into their pockets. Mm. But they would they would bring actors out all the time um, and give them parts that you would never even get an, uh, a chance to audition for in Toronto. Huh. They did um, a massive school tour. And you will find that a whole lot of people you probably interviewed in this section mm -hmm. probably got their first job doing a school tour, the Globe Theatre school tour, because if you did a school tour, you got your equity card. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Yeah. So, but they were, they were great. And, and they brought me out and I did a few shows there. But there was one show that I went out there to, did, to do, which um, uh, starred Richard Greenblatt as Henry Thoreau. Hmm. It's called the, the, the play is called "The Night Thoreau Spent in Jail," you know, and it's as everything you need to know about it is in hmm. the title. Is in the title. Yeah. So they have to have the obligatory runaway slave scene. Mm -hmm. So that was my job. Hmm. I'd go out there and be try to be like a normal human being, and then at night I'd say, "No, oh, master, don't be doing that. Oh, Lord of mercy!" Mm -hmm. I'd do all that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. And then you have to walk around the streets of that city after people have seen you. And you take that on because this is like, like this is like in the seventies, right? This is like white farm boy country. Mm -mm -mm. So their perception is you on that stage. Mm -hmm. For many people, their perception of black people and me was the bigot family. Mm -hmm. So you got so you know. What is it, 2019, and I'm still wearing that shit. <laughs> and I'm sorry to bring it up, but you know what? The, here's the thing. That the reason why I bring it up is uh, 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 you can probably never understand uh, how much it meant to me. Uh, this horrible crap that you had to endure. And I'm, I guess I'm bringing it up to say, you know, if there's any silver lining, I'm probably not alone. There was probably some other black kids who just were inspired by your just being on TV. Regardless of what you said, yeah. it's just the fact that you and, were on and, TV. And I and I get that, and that and that is the that is the salvation of it. Mm. You know, you can still see the YouTube clips. Yeah, I know. And they they're they're only like if this was if this was a five minute segment, mm. there's like a minute forty five of the YouTube clip because as time has gone on, they go, oh, well, we can't say that. Can't oh, we say can't that. say that. We can't. You really and they can't keep say cutting, that. they cutting, cutting, yeah, yeah. cutting, cutting, yeah, yeah. because just... Most of it you can't. Mm, you really most can't. of it you cannot. You it cannot. Really horrible. And I just sort of take comfort in the fact that, all, you know, the, the gigs that I've done like that, I'm going, well, I hope some kids somewhere... <laughs> you know? I hope there's a positive coming out of this. Cause... Exactly, because, my God, I'm eating it right now. Yeah. Holy yeah. jeez, oh, yeah. my God. Yet another black gangster. Oh, yeah. he's getting shot. Oh, but, black rapist! Oh, yeah. here we go. But you know, it, you at some point, you know, you 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 gotta just you just gotta take control of things. I remember, mm. I remember the day that I, I I just called up my agent and said, "I'm not doing commercials anymore. I just, right. I, I it, it's just wearing me out." Mm -hmm. And then the the, the next, and then I had another time when I called her up and I said, "Listen, I am not doing." No child molestation, no pedophile parts, no nothing, because it was it was just becoming like it was it was all these movies, and it was always like you were the stepdad, the black stepdad, and you were always. And I just went, no, my daughter's old enough to to be able to to, to sit down and watch this on TV. The, I don't I don't want her to do that. I don't want to have to sit there and and looking at me leching after some thirteen year old. Mm. That it it, mm. it it repulsed me. Yeah. I think everybody, I, I, uh, you know, I keep saying this too, like every actor has a line and you have to learn what that line is and then once you find that line, stick to it. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not, as long as it's reasonable, as long as it's not, you know, you know, there are certain things that, um, I mean, as an artist, sometimes you have to be aware of, am I saying no because I'm scared? Am I saying no because I'm scared to stretch or grow as an artist or whatever? Mm -hmm. and, and so you have to be aware of that. But then there are times when it's just like, you know what? I don't want to participate in the per 
perpetuation of a racial stereotype or, or yeah. I mean you know and it's harder for younger actors I get that I was doing there, there was there was some television show I don't know it was all about fairies and fae and bad witches and shit I mm -hmm. don't know anyway I go in there and they're they're like slathering on like the most absurd makeup in the world mm -hmm. and anyway and I noticed this the and I said what what's that and he said, "Oh, um, um, the, the, these are those those are um, chicken bones. Uh, I dyed them yellow, and I'm going to put them in your hair." And I said, "No, you're not." <laughs> yeah, no. And and he was like, "No, no, you, we 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 are." We, this is the, and I said, "I'm I said I'm just telling you, as the only black man on this set today, you ain't putting no dyed chicken bones in my hair." Yeah. And he got all pissy, and he went and talked to the producer, and then they went, "Oh, mm -hmm. you anyway, know, it was the last time I ever worked on that show. So what?" But at some point, there was a point in my career, if it had been 20 years earlier, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, yeah. I guess I better. Mm -hmm. So there's, there, is, um, there is a freedom with, with uh, growing older in this business. And, and the sure and certain thing is the power to say no mm -hmm. and walk away is the best power you can have in this life. Yeah. You know, I'll never have fuck you money, but I got fuck you attitude. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you don't need the fuck you money. No, you can still say fuck you. Yeah. You know? Um, I remember when I was a young actor reading the story about Sidney Poitier was off to some role, and he had a kid, he had a mortgage payment due, you know, wife and kids, and he said, no, I would rather starve. Yeah. And I remember being a young guy with a rent payment due, and I was like, I'm not Sidney Poitier. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to pay my rent. But Sidney really? Poitier at that time wasn't Sidney Poitier either. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. 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 And good. I was like, good for you, Sidney. Really? I'm not yeah. you. Yeah.